So we have another member in the YOLO family, YOLO 11. So this is released by Ultralytics. So we have the YOLO V8 model and also the new YOLO 11. In this video here, we're going to see how we can take a custom data set, train a new YOLO 11 model, and also how we can run inference. We only need a few steps. First of all, let's just jump straight into it and take a look at the new model. Then we can label our data set and then train our custom YOLO 11 model. So first of all here, let's just start inside the GitHub repository where we can go in and see the benchmarks so the comparisons with all the other versions in the YOLO model. I'm going to keep this video short so we can just jump in, take the data set, train our model, run in friends, and we should be good to go. You can do all of this within five, 10 minutes on your own site as well. So if you just take a look at the benchmark results, we can see this is a new state-of-the-art model. It runs faster compared to all the other YOLO models and also has better accuracy, at least on the Coco data set. But again, just because we have a new YOLO 11 model doesn't mean that the other models can't be better on your own data set. So definitely test out all the different variations or probably like you'll be five you'll be eight and 11 because again there might be some differences some of the models they can run faster depending on the hardware but also the accuracy on your own data set so don't just blindly trust these benchmarks because again this is on a benchmark coco data set i feel after testing out this model i feel it's a bit of a mix between yolo v8 and also yolo v10 so we get the speed from yolo v10 you also get some false predictions here and there which we're getting with yolo v10 but not as many it runs as fast as yolo v10 but it doesn't have the exact same accuracy at least on the custom data set that i have tested out with the yolo v8 model so i feel it's a bit in between yolo v8 and yolo v10 so let's not just jump straight into our google collab notebook let's go in and take a look at it we can just connect to the runtime you can use this it has free gpu resources available you can just go up to the runtime change the runtime type and you can choose the, the specific gpu that you want to use so i think it's the t4 on the free version of collab so i'm just going to connect here with my 800 on google collab the only thing that we need to do is pip install autolytics make sure that you're updating it to the latest version so if you have it on your local you can just pip install upgrade and they will download the latest version so if you're running into errors make sure that it's just updated that might be the reason so now we're connected let's just go in and pip install it here we'll have our data set and then after that we can just run a single command and we're going to train our own custom yolo v11 model so it's now going inside roboflow i have a data set here where i'm basically just annotating these helmets so if people are wearing helmets or not so this is for um, protection equipment so let's just go through a couple examples. I've already labeled out the data set, have tons of videos on the channel already, how we can label, set up the whole pipeline and so on and go over this tool, but also some other annotation platforms. So we have all these images in our data set. I've generated a version, so we can just see we have this raw. Then we can go in, download a data set up here. We have 70 images in our training set, 20 images in our validation set and 10 images in our test set. Then we can choose the export format. So let's go with YOLO 11 for now. Show downloadable code. I'm going to check that off. Continue. It's going to zip the folder. And now we actually just get this code snippet. We can copy it and paste it directly into our Google Colab notebook. So this is everything that we need to be able to train our own custom models. So we have downloaded it. Now we can just run this pip install RoboFlow. We should be good to go. We're then downloading our data set and we can just run this single train command. We can then export, take a look at the results from Autolytics. We can see all the epoch for epoch, mean error position, precision recall, and all of that. So now we have our data set. Let's go over into our folders. We have our hot hat sample. We have our test, train, and validation. And then we also have our data YAML file. So inside the data YAML file, it's just going to specify the name that we have in the number of classes. So we have head, helmet, person, and we specify the directory for our train, validation, and test set. So that's pretty much it. We just have these folders. This is the structure that Autolytics is using to train all their YOLO models. So this is just what format you need. Also, if you have your own local data set or using another annotation platform. So we have our images, we have our labels, train tests. So this is pretty much just folders with all the labels and also all the images. So inside our label file, we have our object class to start with, and then we have four values for a bounding box. So that's a bounding box point, but also the width and height of it. So that's pretty much everything that we need for the YOLO format. We can then just go down and call this command. I'm just going to close this. We have detect, train, and then we have data. We just specify the data YAML file path. 
we specify which of the models we want to use. So right now we want to go with 11. So this is how easy you can just swap out the models. If you want to test out other models, just YOLO V8. Now it's only called YOLO 11. We have the small, medium, nano, large, extra large versions as well. Let's just go for 30 epochs and we can specify the image size. We also have all the other high parameters that you can specify. Just check out the Ultralytics documentation. So YOLO V11, we're good to go. We can just hit go and it will start training this custom model. So first of all, it's going to download the weights automatically, check your data set, if it's in the correct format and so on, set up all the high parameters, go in and do some data augmentation and so on, set up the optimizer and it will start the training. Again, if you want to dive more into details about any of these stuff, definitely go in and check out my other videos. I have like whole tutorials covering like the basics of deep learning, update detection, computer vision and so on. So now we can see that this training has started epoch per epoch. It's going to go very fast because we only have 100 images and I'm running this on an A100 GPU from NVIDIA. So we should be able to see our mean error positions go up here over time. The losses, they should decrease. Let's just go down and take a look at it. Now we have already completed 15 epochs. So if you just have a couple of hundred images, you can train your models within like 10, 15 minutes. You can test out the different variations, model sizes and so on, and basically just do some modifications. So this is how easy it is to use if you're using Ultralytics, like you can just test out models like within an hour, you can probably figure out what is the best model for your specific data set. So we can see that the mean error positions, it's not really the perfect model. It could be because of the data set as well or the number of epochs. But we can see we started around 0.3 here in the mean error position. And then once we go up, we end up here at around 0.63. So we could definitely train it for longer. We can also go in and see the precision. The precision is pretty good, but the recall is not that good or pretty much bad. That basically just means that we're missing predictions. We get the predictions with our precision, but our recall, we miss a lot of predictions, which we should actually like have predicted. After that, it's going to do the valuation on our validation set. And then we can go in and see for each individual class, how many images, instances, what is the position recall. So we can see that the helmet, it has problems with detecting helmet or that is like the best one person, it has problems with that, could be because of the annotations as well. But in general, this is an okay model, we could probably use it, but we definitely need to chain it for longer. Now we can go over in our runs directory, detect, and then we should be able to see our train, and we have our train too. We have our weights here, you can just go in and download that. If you want to run inference, I'm going to download the best Wait, so we can see how to run inference as well. You can just download it, use the exact same code as I have in the Google Colab notebook here, and basically just throw it into your own local machine. Here we get all the different graphs. So I normally take a look at the results, the P and G, where we can see all these metrics, the curves, the training curves over time. And we can see that our model hasn't converged at all. So we definitely need to train it for longer. The losses, they're decreasing nicely. So it just needs more training. We also to get labels, we get some validation badges. So let's go in and take a look at validation. So this is basically just images that the model has never seen before. And again, these are some very hard use cases as well, because again, there's so many different variations in the data set, so many different examples, like different humans, different environments and so on. But it already does a pretty good job, at least with the helmets, as we also saw in here for our validation. Then you can also go up and take a look at the precision recall curve. Ideally, we should have it up here at the top. So it should be one, one. So we basically just have one in precision and also one in recall. We get all predictions. We don't miss any predictions. So our model is pretty much perfect. So now that we have our model, let's jump inside the Ultralytics documentation and we should be able to just pull the code for running inference. I'm just going to show you the documentation so you can see how to navigate it, but it's basically just calling the predict command. So you can both do it in Python, but also directly from the terminal. So if you just go inside our predict, we can then see we have we have tons of videos covering in here. I'm doing the videos for Ultralytics, working closely together with them to create some cool content and also videos covering all the documentation. So in here, you can see how to run predictions with all the different tasks. So if you're just running object detection, we can load in the model. So this is the best that PT model that we just downloaded. We throw our images through a model. You can take any like could be a video stream, zero index for a webcam, RGPS stream, list here of images as well everything you can just throw into the model you'll get the results out and this is how you extract the bounding boxes mass key points and so on depending on what type of task you're doing in this example we're just doing optic detection so let's go and take a look at that if you want to run the detections either we can use python so this is only a few lines of code or we can use the command line right now we just use the command line to train it so let's now use the python code and you can do the exact same thing on your side 
So right now we can delete all of this and we just need to take the path from our best.pt. I copy the path, throw it in here and we don't want to run train. So I took the wrong example. So here we can run prediction, but it will basically be the exact same thing. It's just throwing the image through our model. So let's go back here again. We run predict, delete this part. And again, either you can just use the boss example here that they have, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of our test images. Grab that one, just take an arbitrary. We copy the path to that. And there we go. We should be able to see our results. And we can even go in here and just call save, to set equal to true. And it will save the image. You can also specify show if you want to show it, but you can't do that in a Google Colab notebook. So we're running it in here now. We take our image, throw it through the model, and we will get the results out. So we see here, pre-processing, seven milliseconds pre-processing, 60 milliseconds inference, and also post-processing. And then we can see we detect one helmet in 61 millisecond. All the results are saved within runs detect, and then we have our predict folder. So let's go inside that one, predict. And this is the results that we get out when we have like have our model. So we can see that we're detecting one helmet, which is correct. So this is a whole pipeline that you need to set up to train your own custom computer vision models with the new YOLO 11 model. We took a look at the results, the benchmark, make sure that you test out various models because it could be depending on your data set or it is. Then we took a data set with RoboFlow. You can just go in and annotate it, export it into a Google Colab notebook, train it in a few minutes. We're good to go. We can now run inference with it, download the model, use it in our own applications and projects. So I hope you learned a ton this video here. If you want to learn more about computer vision, all my courses and so on, I even have my community, the AI career program. If you want to get into freelance work, level up your career, how to land AI machine learning jobs. I also have the AI career program. You can check it out on a website. Everything is down in the description and so on. And then I just hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.